I just hope I don't crack up. <laughs> it's because of me, right? Oh my god. When are these guys gonna ask me for? My voice is a little gravelly, so. <clears throat> Why did you choose the SOGC program at University of Oregon? And how did your experience in the J School help you build your career at WDCW? Mm. Um, I started at the U of O as a graphic design major and uh, quickly discovered they really weren't going to train me for anything. And I always wanted to go into commercial art. Um, uh, I found, uh, someone had told me there was an advertising layout class in the School of Journalism. And uh, I met with a professor over there, uh, Roy Paul Nelson, who was awesome. Met with him, and um, uh, it's like, this is it. This is it. This is the practice. This is what I want to do. You're good at this. You okay, guys, on the swing? Yeah, yeah. Right. keep your movements a little bit. Yeah, but Whiten's going like this. It's like, come on, man. Oh, no, they were chasing. It was brutal. That's funny. You want me to go again? No. Let's get through it first, and we'll see if there's... Okay, something. all right, because I, I, got, I got three answers for that. Well, then let's do it. That's easy. <clears throat> I'll read it again. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, why did you choose the SOJC program at University of Oregon, and how did your experience in the J School help you build your career and WDCW? Well, I sort of think the school found me. I started off at, at, in graphic design in the, in the uh, applied arts and uh, didn't jive with me. I found an advertising layout class and fell in love with the faculty, with the program. Um, I think my time there was so formative, uh, I didn't realize it until much later in terms of setting the foundation for understanding the business, uh, understanding strategy, understanding different roles. I was a creative art director and most of the training at the time was for account people and media and strategy and I, I got that in spades and that that's helped me my whole career at foundation okay, uh, you yeah ask me the question again I don't think right. I'm in the way in why did you choose the SOJC program at University of Oregon and how did your experience in the J school help you build your career and WDC um, I was so young back then. But the things that stuck with me that I still uh, use today, really the practices around strategy and around the business of advertising. You don't really learn that in, in art school. You learn that uh, at a, um, a real university. I learned that at the SOJC. They drilled that into my head. And um, you know, in this business, you got to make money, and it's based on strategy. It's not based on a wacky idea. So that's with me every day. Every day. Awesome. I like that. With feeling. It's like meeting payroll. Yeah, meeting payroll. That's true, too. <laughs> it prepared me for meeting payroll. <laughs> it's my favorite answer ever. Uh, we'll move on. You guys okay with good? Yeah, we got okay. I look great, don't I? Yeah, no, I don't. Do. You get this part? That's the. It's like. Uh, I don't. Because right. <laughs> at some point I'm going to lay the yellow wingtip on the table. So. Well, get yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, you're going to click. No. Okay. Sorry. Right. Right. Don't worry about it, man. I got a little bit of yellow in here. At some point, we'll. I'm just. We can do that way. He's the boss. I'm just the interview. Don't. Don't listen to me, it's man. Not very yellow. As much as it is, it doesn't. What was the school like when you attended? Describe the atmosphere in and around Eleanor. Okay, let me think about that. Um, I would say the the um, the mood in Allen Hall was always extremely professional. All right, um, you've got an interesting mix of journalists who are extremely serious about what they do. And also, the practice within advertising was very serious because they trained you to understand the business of advertising. Very serious stuff. So the tone was extremely professional, and I always got the feeling it was going to prepare me for the real world because, you know, the tone uh, and the atmosphere of the department and the building uh, was the right tone. Right. Another one you okay? I don't know. Sounds great to me. I mean, let's do one more. Okay. I'll try to make it shorter. Okay. I'm gonna drop in an F bomb or something. The, the other people basically were able to do one time through, and if I asked them again, they're kind of like, I kind of already said it. And also, it was a matter of getting 
the number of people we were at. Yeah, I'll try to go short if you need a Dan went short really. Oh, he's yeah, fucking crazy. He's an ad guy, right? Right. And he's banned. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, what was the school like when you attended? Uh, describe the atmosphere in and around Alamo. Um, the school was extremely professional. Everyone was serious about what they wanted to do. You've got a real interesting mix. You've got uh, journalism, advertising, PR, things like that. But the journalists were always very serious about what they wanted to do. Journalism is a very serious practice. And I think that sort of washed onto the whole school. Advertising, very serious, really trained you well, thought hard about what the real world was like, which I can't say you know, would apply to you know, other departments, other parts of the school. Blah, blah, blah. That was, uh, that was good. Enough. Still a little long. Okay. Well, like I said. It's all right. It's all right. That's too camera for me. Um, what do you value most about your time at VSO, JC? Um, the, th the thing I value most, honestly, is the uh, uh, relationship with um, the faculty. Um, uh, because they helped set me on the path to my career. I wouldn't be sitting here today if I, uh, if I didn't have these people in my life. A lot of people said that. Okay. All right. Let me elaborate. It was good. I mean, it's good. It's, it's a good answer. Yeah, no, right. But that's, that's what we want, right? You were, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, and I assume you're going to get to uh, uh, talking about specifics about professors, or do you want me to talk about it now? Um, well, let's get through this. Okay. And we'll, Great. Um, what do you value most about your time at the SOJC? Uh, what I value most is the fact that they set me on a career path. I mean, a real, honest to goodness career path. Before then, I was kind of like floating around trying to figure out what am I going to do? There's, I wanted kind of creativity and business and strategy, and I didn't really know. And so once I got there, I locked in. I was really able to focus. That, that was a godsend. I think we're okay on that. I, mean, um, I haven't dropped any F bombs yet. I'm just. You haven't? No. You will. <laughs> Why did Well, you got to bleep them out. I want to bleep them out of the edit, right? Yeah. Um, please share any additional funny, compelling, or poignant anecdotes from your student days. Oh, shoot. It wasn't during the Vietnam War, so there's no color there. Um, uh, I assume any kind of colorful stories doesn't necessarily um, talk about like throwing uh, fraternity barbecues into the mill race or peeing on the library or anything like that, right? So. Um, well, you just did that. So <laughs> Peeing on the library. Okay, great, fantastic. Um, question again? Okay, I'm trying to think. Memories, memories, memories. Please share any additional funny, compelling, or poignant anecdotes from your student days. Um. Uh, I remember one time I was sitting in uh, Roy Paul Nelson's office, uh, a um, great, great professor and role model, and um, he said, we got to get you to New York. And he helped me and a couple other the professors, Dr. Winter and uh, Professor Metzler, helped get me to New York on an internship. That changed my life because I was able, Portland kid, I'm an Oregon boy, never been east of the Rockies, right? to get me to New York and experience what that place was like. So when I was ready to go look for a job in New York, I could go, and I did that. That's awesome. I mean, I don't know how you'd be better than that. Well, it's pointy, it's not, you know. Boring. Yeah, but that's, Fine, yeah, I'll find a place for it. That that's more germane than, if Dan was the one. peeing on a library or he trying to Dan dodge the draft. To, if Dan wanted to go pick up all those and just kind of, he kept holding it back. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he, no, we got a couple of really good ones out of him. Oh, it just, all well. I knew is, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, what do you hope future U of O journalism students will accomplish? <sighs> um, 
There's a lot of hope in that building right now, I think, uh, around the practices that are being taught. Uh, I see the fact that, uh, if nothing else, uh, the hope of journalism as it moves into the future is in that building. Um, I also, what I also look, what I look forward to is the innovation that's in that building because it's about communication. Um, communicating uh, messages that change the world. I'll start with these practices and, and start with these uh, majors. It's, uh, it's really mind boggling when you think about it. It's great, you wanna do one a little short? Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you hope a future U of O journalism students will accomplish? The way I see uh, the school now, uh, and from my perspective, I feel like these kids have the opportunity to change the world. And, um, you know, I'm done, that's not just bullshit. These guys, this is for real. Um, I see on one hand the journalists and students can, you know, save free speech. Um, it's dying right now, and um, it needs to be resuscitated.